Well, I wouldn't have told him to do that. Okay. Alright, thanks. Goodbye. Oh, hi. My name's Mark Jumper from a band called Bob Day's Tank Engine Man. Maybe you've heard of it. Now, when CTD first asked me to do this video on how to properly pack a box of CDs and vinyl, I jumped at the chance to say yes. In fact, I was so anxious to get my yes in before the end of the phone conversation that I completely forgot to say it at all. It took me weeks of apologies and sending gift baskets to prove that it was nothing more than a simple misunderstanding. But I made it. And here I am now to tell you about CTD's foolproof method for packing boxes of CDs and vinyl. Thanks. Now we don't mean to be condescending or to suggest that you don't know how to do your job. It's just that we recognize that boxing isn't always an intuitive process. And we've had so much experience that we've been able to develop a method which puts us at the top of the packing list. And anyway, I can sympathize. Before two days ago, I never packed a box. And I'll tell you this, I was terrified. At first it was difficult and confusing. I couldn't seem to get the hang of it. I was sweaty and thirsty and an absolute mess. Take a look for yourself. <laughs> but then I started using CTD's foolproof method. And look at me now. And what's great is, the CTD method for boxing is so easy to learn, you'll be stuffing boxes securely, tightly, and safely before you even know it. And the best part is, the box confidence. Now why don't we get started? I mean, that's what we're here for, right? Now before we begin, I want to emphasize a few things. All boxes should be double boxed at all times, giving special attention and consideration to the corners. Some boxes are even going to have to be triple boxed, but we'll get to more on that later. Some things you're going to need are packing tape, a ruler, a utility knife, 12 by 12 inch cardboard flats, and packing material such as packing peanuts, paper, or bubble wrap. You're also going to need 12 and a half by 12 and a half liner boxes for vinyl. 30 count boxes for CDs and 12 and 3 quarters by 12 and 3 quarters boxes for the outer box. When you're choosing a box, make sure to pick the ones in the best condition, using a new box first. Check to see if the corners are damaged or if there are holes in the box. If the boxes are coming from overseas, they probably won't survive another trip across the country. And if they come directly from the manufacturer, you're going to want to rebox them. No matter what box you use, take a look at the bottom where you should find a stamp that looks like this. It'll have information about the box's edge crush and load bearing properties. First things first, weigh the order to decide how many boxes you're actually going to need. If possible, boxes should not exceed 40 pounds. If the box is over 35 pounds, it will need to be triple boxed for extra protection. Never pack a box of vinyl only that exceeds 30 pounds. When dealing with a larger order which requires more than one box, weight should be distributed as evenly as possible. It doesn't make a lot of sense to pack one box at 40 pounds and another at 10 pounds, so just be mindful of how you split your order up. One should also consider keeping the box dimensions uniform. Now it's time to find a liner, at least one for each box you're going to pack, using the same selection process mentioned before. It's best to retape the bottom of the liner box to ensure that it will hold the vinyl securely. If the bottom flaps of the liner overlap, just place a piece of cardboard to even out the surface, and then put a flat on top. Now, pack the vinyl into the liner box, alternating the spines. 7-inch records can go in between the 12-inch records, one at a time. This will help save space. Now, if the 7-inch has a spine, you are going to want to pack those at the top of the box, also alternating spines. Or, you can put them in a 7-inch box, which can be packed at the top of the liner, surrounded by packing material. This method can be used for all odd-shaped items. 
Either way, fill the liner box to the top, leaving just enough room for one more flat. Then you can close the box and tape it up. I'll show you how we do it. One, two, three across the open top. Seal off the open edge. One, two across the middle and seal off the other edge. When you're done, give it a shake to make sure nothing's loose. If you don't have 12 and a half inch by 12 and a half inch liner boxes, take any size box, use a ruler to measure it out to 12 and a half inches, and cut it down to the right size. Then you can fold it and put the pieces together, and then tape up the bottom as you would normally, making sure to tape up the open edges. If you have a small amount of CDs, you're going to want to pack them first by putting them in the bottom of the liner before putting any vinyl in. Evenly disperse them amongst the corners using packing material and leveling out the surface. If one of the stacks isn't level, just use a piece of cardboard and then put a flat on top. If you have a larger amount of CDs, pack them into 30 count boxes, making sure to keep the weights even and filling any gaps with packing material and then throw a little tape on those boys. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to make the actual outer box. Just take your box and build it, and then we're going to use the same taping method that I showed you before. One, two, three across the opening on the top, one, two going across the top the other way, and then seal up the edges. Now if you don't have access to the out of box sizes that we're suggesting you use, it's okay to use any size that's available to you. Just make sure to use the same precautions as we've mentioned before. Securing the corners, padding the bottom, and filling with an appropriate amount of packing material to ensure snugness. Fill every gap and always double box. Now if you don't have 12 and a half by 12 and a half liner boxes, I suggest you get them. If you're in the business of selling vinyl records, it's a worthwhile investment. Now that you've got your outer box made, load the bottom with three or four cardboard flats. It's an excellent way to pad the bottom of a box, but keep in mind it's going to add a little extra weight. Now if you have 30 counts, put them into the box first. On their side, they should fit into a 12 and 3 quarter by 12 and 3 quarter box perfectly. Then you can place the vinyl liner box on top, sliding it in like this. Grab some packing material and fill any empty space. Throw a flat on top, close the box up, and tape it using the same method shown before. You can also cut the box down to fit its contents. Just open up the corners with a knife and bend the cardboard down around the inner boxes using something rigid for the cleanest folds. Then you can tape the box up as normal. You will remember me mentioning that any box which weighs more than 35 pounds will need to be triple boxed. All you need to do is size up the outer box, find another box which fits over it, and put the outer box inside. Again, make sure the corners are strong and the boxes fit snugly together. If you can't find a box which fits perfectly, just make a bed of packing material to place the box in, fill the sides, top it off with more packing material, and tape the box as usual. Now you're ready to send your box. We strongly recommend that you use UPS as they tend to handle the packages with the most care. In our experience, other parcel carrier services just aren't as reliable. In particular, we suggest that you don't use the United States Postal Service. Well, there you go, but now is probably a good time for a quick recap. Weigh the order. Distribute the weight evenly. Pick a liner box. Small quantities of CDs go on the bottom of the liner. Pack the vinyl alternating the spines. Odd shapes on top. Tape up the filled liner box. Check for loose items. Large quantities of CDs go in 30 counts. Build the outer box. Place flats at the bottom of the outer box. 30 counts first. Vinyl liner next. Fill the extra space with packing material put a final flat on, and tape up the box.
Well, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something. I also hope you'll watch this video again. You never know what you'll find on the second viewing. And don't forget, you can also go to downloads.carrottoprecords.com slash boxingmethod.html for more boxing information. Well, thanks again, everybody. I'm Mark Jumper from Bob Day's Tank Engine Man, signing off.